Hello, um, my name is Tony Franklin. I um, was a gambling addict um, for 40 years. Um, I stopped gambling in 2019. Um, my addiction was to uh, slot machines and uh, online casino products, um, including electronic roulette. I want to talk today um, specifically about uh, or around um, affordability. Now, the um, Gambling Commission uh, recently consulted um, on affordability as part of the remote customer interaction consultation. Um, and one of the reasons um, for consulting, uh, in their words, was that they had compelling evidence that the current thresholds for action determined by operators were too high and were not effective at identifying and preventing harm to consumers, including people in some of the most vulnerable circumstances. Now, certainly, that would be my own experience of um, gambling with the operators was that they never um, intervened to ask me if my um, if I was okay with my level of spend and actually what they tended to do was to um, encourage you to spend more and send you um, little nudges or or um, promotions or valuables as you know all sorts of different terminology they use for this um, to encourage you to spend more now the industry um, will say that they've invested heavily in technology and their um, behavioral tracking software to identify potential markers of harm um, to intervene um, and also obviously there are thresholds um, at which um, they have to intervene according to um, Gambling Commission um, guidance. However, clearly this is not working as, as the Commission themselves have stated. So the question I guess is, you know, what is missing and what do they need to do better in order to, um, um, to be more effective at um, stopping um, gamblers um, escalating to, to harmful patterns of play? Now, for me, a big part of this is actually assessing um, vulnerability right at the start of the customer journey and, of course, ongoing as well, because um, vulnerability is dynamic, um, as is affordability. And, and actually, we can all at some stage um, be vulnerable in our lives. It may be that we lose a job, it may be that we lose a partner, it may be that a member of the family um, passes away. Um, and, and, you know, that makes us, um, you know, vulnerable at that point in time. So, I mean, I guess the question is, what is vulnerability? Well, vulnerability, you know, can be stress, it can be anxiety, it can be um, bereavement, upset. And of course, it can also be, you know, other coexisting conditions such as ADHD, Asperger's, um, autism, you know, all of which, you know, um, presents as a uh, as a vulnerability um, in in the context of um, high speed gambling products and immersing ourselves to escape um, from those challenges or because we have a condition that um, latches on to um, high speed gambling so I think that you can look at this through three lenses, of vulnerability that is. I, I think you can look at it through the financial lens. So we know that um, a lot of people in this country today um, live below the poverty line. I've, um, 15 million people in this country, according to ONS data, are below the, the poverty line, so they don't have enough money. So um, it it may be that they're already struggling to pay their priority bills. And this information, you know, potentially will show up on um, somebody's um, credit file. So, so by running a check on somebody's credit file, they can use data to screen for already existing vulnerability. So that might be mispayments, um, it might be defaults um, or, or public records such as uh, county court judgments or bankruptcy, all of which would indicate that somebody has a financial vulnerability and that their financial um, circumstances should be screened um, to make sure that any 
spend on gambling is really affordable to them that they're meeting their priority bills first. The second lens through which I think you can look at affordability is age. So we know, or at least there is a consensus that the um, brain doesn't fully mature until around the age of 25. So we know that gambling is legal um, for most products from 18 uh, onwards. And, um, and so therefore we could consider somebody between the ages of 18 and 25 as, you know, potentially vulnerable due to the fact that their brain has not um, fully matured. And so therefore, um, you know, we should look at um, even if they have the means to gamble, they might be a very well paid footballer. Are they actually um, at a higher um, risk of gambling harm due to, to their age? And should we therefore um, put in place a, 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 a hard limit um, or a percentage of their discretionary income beyond which you know, they, they, they shouldn't be allowed to, to gamble? And then the third factor around vulnerability is mental health and well-being. And so, you know, as it, I'll use myself as an example. Um, I mean, really, my gambling addiction was a um, was, was a result of me latching on to playing slot machines, um, and um, as a result of being um, perceived as a problematic child because I had undiagnosed ADHD, and there was very little help um, in the system to understand my behaviours. Um, my my parents tried desperately hard to get me um to get me um help but it just really wasn't available and 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 there was so much chatter and noise going on in my brain and you know i, I never really had uh let's say the opportunity to 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 work it out and work out you know the the, the direction for me with my life because um i came across some um, slot machines and basically the slot machines silenced all the noise when i was playing the machines it was just me and the machine and so that was my vulnerability, if you like. Um, so, and of course, you know, under mental health and well-being, there can be many factors. It can be about how much time someone's playing. It can be about stress, anxiety, um, bereavement. Um, there are just so many factors to mental health. Uh, and, and that in itself is a, a really pertinent point because the question, you know, most of us at some point in our life, are going to be vulnerable. We're all vulnerable, at, you know, at a certain um, time point. And, and so, if we start to um, look and screen someone's well-being, um, that can also, um, you know, provide us with information which can be used to guide how much somebody um, should be spending time and money, even if they can afford it because they are more vulnerable due to their um, mental health and, and well-being at any particular point in time. Now, you know, if you join a gym, they do these kind of screening questions on your, on your you know, health and well-being, you know, make sure that you don't have exist, you know, pre-existing conditions or, or, you know, something that would um, put you at risk of using gym equipment. So as part of a public health approach, um, this seems to me to be a perfectly reasonable um, process as 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 part of the onboarding of a new customer, but also at regular time points or if, you know, their behavioural tracking, you know, picks up a change in behaviour later on in, in someone's, you know, play patterns. So this identifying vulnerability and assessing someone's vulnerability and, and and therefore assessing you know appropriate spend um levels i think is is a really critical consideration as part of affordability um at the start of the customer journey and ongoing um to ensure that people don't get themselves into you know the huge um mess um that um you know the the press and, and, and the Gambling Commission and, um, and their own um, internal compliance work caseload um, has seen um, arising. Um, yeah, so that would be, you know, my, my thoughts on, on, on vulnerability and affordability 
um, and assessing vulnerability through the lens of financial age and mental health and well-being right at the start of the customer journey and ongoing. So I hope you found this um, interesting and um, informative as part of the um, debate. And um, yeah, um, always happy to have a discussion and answer any questions um, if, if anybody has any. Thank you.